Muslims have sent me emails and made phone calls and come to the door asking me this question. It drives me crazy. I was hearing the scratching and the knocking and the meowing. It's like, come on. So, I need your help with this. First question is, do I like animals? That's a really good question, right? Now, nah. the answer, of course I do. Who doesn't like animals? You guys do, right? Of course, everybody. All right, here's some of my favorites. Buzz, Buddy, right? You know him, okay. How about, how about him? Roadrunner? Okay, I like him. Meet me, right? I like that. Okay, here's some more. Yogi Bear. He's always stealing picnic baskets. I like Yogi. And Donald Duck. So, I like them and their animals. Here's some more. You might know these a little bit more. Sandy Cheeks. Oh, I should have let you tell me. <laughs> From what show? You got it. I love that show. I love that. And where does she live? Bikini Bottom. Yeah, yeah. How about this guy? You know him? Yeah. From what show? You got it. That show is really cool. I like that. I mean, it's weird, but it's, it's cool, right? Okay. Here's some more animals, which I also like, and this, again, proves that I like animals. Do you remember these guys? The Wonder Pets, right? Okay, and finally, to prove for once and for all that I like animals, how about this guy? The dog with a blog, right? Isn't he great? I mean, any dog with blogs is okay. I know, but he blogs. Welcome to the show. I think it's on Disney Channel. I think. The dog with a blog. So that proves it. The answer is yes. I like animals. In fact, I love animals. Now, since I love animals so much, I like to write about them. Just like that little puppy with the typewriter, right? Do they even have typewriters anymore? Do you guys even use them? I don't know. Writing about animals is fun. I enjoy it. In fact, my first book, which I wrote and drew when I was in first grade, is called The Wooden Snake. Now, a snake is an animal, right? That's the actual cover. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, there were also real snakes as well as the wooden snakes, so much of the fake and it won the author's award. <laughs> you know, believe it or not, that made a huge difference in getting my writing career going. It gave me the interest. It just sparked it. Thanks to Mrs. Schwanibrock, my first grade teacher. <laughs> now, my new books also include animals. Here's an example. This is really gross, okay? But be prepared. They're not all like this. It's called Tommy Puke. And the boy with the golden bar. It's true. It's true. It's really gross. <laughs> it's about a boy who's the grossest boy in the world, and he uses his powers of grossness to help his friend who is being picked on by bullies. It, it has a good message, yeah. And it's dear to my heart. Now, Tom, in that book, has a very special pet. This is where the animal comes in. And now, he's the smelliest boy in the world. So, what kind of pet might he have? A smelly boy and a smelly animal. What kind? A skunk. Oh, man! It was supposed to be a surprise. <laughs> you got it! Gertrude the skunk. He loves Gertrude. Isn't she adorable? I think she's really cute. Now, not all my books are gross, as I said earlier. <clears throat> so, here's one now. It's called Dolphin Night. Dolphins are animals, right? Sea creatures, sea animals. Uh, the dolphin's name in this book is Seek, and he helps this girl, whose name is Krissa. He helps her to find a way to help the kingdom of the dolphin people and the kingdom of the shark people to be friends, because they're not getting along so well. So, there's an animal right there. Now I have one more that I can think of right off the top of my head. If I can turn the page here. Now see what you think of this one. This is another animal from one of my books. A hippo ballerina. Now how many times do you see a hippo doing ballet? Isn't that weird? What's with the parasol? So, 
Now, as, as you can see, I like animals. I put them in my books. But, as I think about it, I wonder if I maybe need to put more in. You know? It's possible. Because the animals are great, right? I mean, these guys need some more. So do I need more animals in my books? Well, what do you think? Maybe? Maybe? You think? Alright. Well, I've been thinking about that, and I came up with some ideas. Where do you see? I think you're going to enjoy it. The answer to the question, do I need more animals in my books? Yeah. Yes. And, yeah, I do need more animation in my presentation. Well. Come on now. There you go. Come on. There we go. Get that last blip in there. Now, here's an example of one of my animal-free books. This book has no animals in it. We're going we're gonna to change that. Okay? It's called Resist the Red Babylon. It's a science fiction exciting thriller. Right? These guys are fighting like Star Wars. They're fighting, they're with, they wear suits of armor in outer space and they're blasting each other with lasers. Resist the Red Battle. But it doesn't have any animals. But we're going to add one too. How about that? We're going to change it to this. Coming up any second now. Come on, you. Here it comes. Resist the Pink Pink Wee. Is that better? You think that might work? I kind of like that. That's a powerful looking pig there. I like the laser beam coming out of them. Okay, so I think we're on to something. I think we're, this is a good idea. I put more animals in my books. So, here's another one of my books. It's called Blackbeard Aliens. Now, have you heard of Pirates of the Caribbean? Okay, you have? Do you like them? Oh, see, that's great. Pirates of the Caribbean is great. And Blackbeard is one of the pirates who, I think he was in, I know he was in one of those movies. I'm sure. Anyway, in this book, Blackbeard and the pirates are fighting aliens, alien monsters. But there's no animals. But we're going to change that because we need more animals in my writing, right? So, Blackbeard's bunny. <laughs> what do you think? Blackbeard's bunny? Do you like it? I like it. <laughs> I know. Wait, how can he? He can't shoot them. He just that would have to be friendly with them, eat carrots with them or something. But I like that. It makes for an exciting book. It's something that's got more animals. Now we're going to do one more. Here's another of my stories, or books. Six superhero stories. I bet you can't guess what that's what that's about, right? <laughs> Six superhero stories. But there are no animals, just a bunch of superheroes. So, we're going to add some animals. We're going to fix it. We'll change it right now, before your very eyes, to six super rhino stories. <laughs> Do you like that better? It's more interesting, isn't it? I think so. So, I guess we've learned something today, haven't we? And that is the message, more animals, better books. Right? Don't you think? I agree. That makes them better. Now, when you go home and write your books, right, which you're going to do, you might even be already writing some. I have a hunch. <laughs> yeah. When you go home and write your books, what are you going to do? Huh? What do you think? What do you think your plan should be? More or less animals? More animals. Yes! Good girl, cute girl. You are right. More animals. That is the correct answer. Because animals are great. Almost done. We know that more animals equals more fun. So therefore, when you write your books, that's what you're going to do. That means that you and I are all on the same page, right? And that's a great thing. Now go write, though you're already right. I don't have to tell you. <laughs> go home and write your book. I know you can. You've got the great imagination, but you got to just put it on paper on the computer screen. I want to read more awesome books, and I know you can write them. And don't forget, the most important lesson of writing, the most important lesson of writing, what do you think it might be? What? Uh, yeah, that's huge. <laughs> that is, and there's one more lesson that you need to remember, okay? One more lesson for you. And this is for anybody who writes. 
Have fun. Remember that. Have fun when you write. You promise?